What's up, ladies and gentlemen, YouTube, everybody out there? It's Philip 20, and I'm back. We are almost completely done with our outdoor unit. I'm gonna make a different kind of modification that sounds unusual to a normal residential unit, but it's only just for demonstration purposes. I don't have 24 volts in here, but also I wanna run a 115 volt transformer to run the fan. I've got a 115 volt transformer and I've got a 24 volt transformer. I'm gonna get both of those. We're gonna install them in here. I'll put the 115 volt over here because we're gonna power the fan from 230 volts, transform it down with a transformer to 110 volts and run a quarter of the speed because Ohm's law, when you reduce the voltage by half, you get about a quarter of the power, uh, whatever, I don't care right now. But also I need a way to turn on the reversing valve. And in order to do that, I need a 24 volt transformer. So once we get that, we'll find out exactly how much power this machine is going to consume at the same time. But before I start it, I have to have an evaporator coil. You can't just do that. You gotta put it in the ductwork. I got an evaporator coil now. It's not the same one, but it'll work. I'm gonna put it on top of this. I'm gonna trim these pieces of metal off so I don't stab the coil and I have to fix it, but it's one I can fix because it's copper. Holy crap. You think that engineers back in the day would have thought about it right. Copper's a better heat conductor than aluminum. Copper is solderable on the job without expensive machinery like a TIG welder because that aluminum rod sucks. If you're getting it for refrigeration, you're a fool. It might work for other applications, but I damn sure know it don't work for refrigeration. So I'll put the coil on top because it's a big slab coil. I'll put it on top, I'll blow the fan through it, and we'll see how much uh, the pressure is. I'll put, run some refrigerant lines to it. It's got a Two and a half ton coil, two and a half ton thermal expansion valve designed for R410A refrigerant. We gotta make sure we're not overcharging the system uh, or putting uh, liquid in it. So we gotta make sure we don't have liquid going back to the compressor and then we're good to go. We're also gonna freeze it, but that's for a different day. We're gonna talk about that later. You guys will see the, we're gonna build a chilling freezing system uh, and it's gonna be awesome. You guys are gonna love it. We'll see you in just a bit. Let me get all my stuff together. We'll get started.
Well, I broke it. Pour it out. I'll have to use a different tip. I got a cutting tip that I'll have to use for now. So the general rule of thumb that I've experienced with micron gauges is if it gets below 2,000 microns, there's not ever going to be a leak in the system. It's just you need to continue vacuuming until 500 microns. 500 microns ensures that there's no moisture remaining in humidity or moisture that's not evaporated yet. So if we get below 2,000 microns, we know we're not leaking. And if we get below, or if we get uh, close to 500 microns, we know we're pretty good. So I'll let this thing run its course because it may take an hour. I've already started adding refrigerant, so. This should automatically turn on. It might require a five minute time delay. There it is. And the compressor's running. So here's a temperature probe. And we're set to R410A refrigerant. At the moment, we got 60 degrees superheat. That means we're pretty low on refrigerant, so I'm gonna add a little more. We're at 41 degrees superheat. The temperature of the line's about 85 degrees. It's pretty hot in here, so, I mean, that don't surprise me. Uh, we got a 33 degree superheat. Now I was told this reversing valve would never shift, or it might not shift all the time. Now. I'm not saying it won't shift all the time or it will, but for sure we got 259 PSI on the head pressure, which is kind of low for this refrigerant. And I still don't believe we're fully charged yet. Our expansion valve seems to be uh, functioning and we're about 32 degrees superheat. I'm still very, very sure that it's low in refrigerant. We don't have a lot of airflow going across this coil. Uh, so more than likely, once I put it inside the uh, air handler, it'll be forced air to go through it. And uh, that 
will improve the heating of the refrigerant because if I keep charging it's going to simulate a dirty filter because I just don't feel like there's a ton of air going through here. It feels like it's cool but it just don't feel like it's enough. The subcoolant's about two degrees so that's uh, that's low. I need to probably ring, bring that up a little bit. Of course again the main test of this setup was just to make sure that this thing would turn on and work. At the moment, I'm gonna feel hot air coming out of this coil here. Warm, warm enough. Which is pretty much uh, Heat's being removed, being blew out the top, then air's circulating back and forth. Warm air's coming out. Once I get that coil heated correctly, I can add the correct amount of refrigerant, but at the moment I won't be able to do that until, well, it's uh, installed into the <coughs> ductwork. Once it's in the ductwork, I can use my infinity system and run it on uh, first stage and then turn off second stage for the meantime. Let's go ahead and switch the reversing valve and see how it works. As of right now, the reversing valve went ahead and reversed. Now the refrigerant is flowing backwards and the air coming out of the this coil is going to be cooled. The air coming out of the top, I can already tell it's real warm. Now with this setup, we got a lot more airflow coming out the sides for it to uh, evaporate. And this needs to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, well, my batteries went dead on my uh, microphone. Sorry, lost all the audio. Basically, the gist of the idea is I went through all the tests, the reversing valve works to energize and de-energize. It removes heat, uh, maybe not at a satisfactory rate, but it removes heat. In the future, maybe if I'm disappointed with the function, I may upgrade it to a ton and a half air conditioning system that would provide more capacity, twice as much capacity as this one. Uh, we will see. Um, I will look into that. But at the moment, I'm just trying to get this thing to run. And what I've got, it, it's running fine. It doesn't have the capacity for sure as a normal air conditioning system. The fan that will be running across this coil will be have to be really, really slow, which is cool. I got a infinity system. It will be able to do that. At this point, I'm going to tear it back apart, put the refrigerant back in the indoor, the outdoor unit, the valve it off, and I'll start installing it. But this is the end of the video because I'm I'm sure you're tired of hearing my crap. This is Philip 20 with solar power, electricity, and electronics. I'll see you later. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. There's lots more content coming. Click the subscribe button below. Make sure you come back for more because there's great content always coming up every day in this channel. See you next time. Peace.